Hello everybody and welcome to this discussion between me, Declan Henry, and Sheikh Azra Rashid. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a writer and researcher and author of eight books, including Voices of Modern Islam, What It Means to be Muslim Today. Sheikh Azra Rashid is a renowned imam, Islamic scholar, teacher and author who is based here in Birmingham in the UK. Today's discussion is about Islam and homosexuality. Homose homosexuality is considered a major sin in Islam and is punishable in some Muslim majority countries by death under Sharia law. To the vast majority of Muslims, homosexuality is a moral disorder. Let me read that last line again. Homosexuality is a moral disorder. Sheikh Rashid, what's your opinion of this? Well, of course, Declan, my initiating point, my standpoint would be from the, the moral, uh, with regard to the morality of homosexuality, would be from the principles of Al-Islam. And the teachings of Al-Islam are based on the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Morality for us is defined by God. Mm. So unlike secular law, which is experiment, uh, laws change with time and place as time progresses, laws undergo modification, including morality. In Islam, we do not have that concept. Good and bad is ultimately defined by God. Mm. So the mm. human mind is insufficient to determine whether something is good or bad. We need divine revelation and we always re resort to divine revelation. Not what would you would think, uh, what some would refer to as um, uh, clergy determining what the meaning of certain texts are. If the text is very clear, like the prohibition of alcohol, Mm -hmm. or the prohibition of gambling and the prohibition of adultery. Mm -hmm. All these things are very clear. They do not need a clergy to define mm -hmm. what is haram, halal, mm -hmm. what is prohibited. And of course, these issues are very clear in the, in the Quran. Yes, so homosexuality is clearly prohibited in the Quran and in the Hadith. Okay, well, I think we need, to, we need to expand a little bit on this. So tell me about what are the teachings in the Quran, there's, there's, there's uh, say so homosexuality you, is, you have, is wrong. Firstly, you have the story of uh, Lut, Ali Saram, which is the prophet Lot, yeah. uh, which is found in the Bible, it is. and the condemnation of the people of Lut mm -hmm. for uh, having this uh, this uh, practice of homosexuality, mm -hmm. which we would say what you mentioned in the death penalty or capital punishment for homosexuality. Mm is really if you reword that as being public mm. display mm. that changes the entire paradigm mm. how you view um, the actual punishment in itself but would i be correct in saying that it doesn't explicitly mention the word homosexuality uh, what it mentions is the sexual act meaning shahwatan min dunin nisa that you approach men Shahwatan, Mindunin Nisa, not approaching women, meaning sexually, mm. uh, approaching men. That's clearly prohibited in the Quran. And through uh, the, in terms of Islamic schools having various interpretations in Islamic law, this is something agreed upon mm. across the board. Mm. Regarding the, the act of homosexuality being prohibited, mm. To the extent that a man committing sodomy with his wife is also prohibited in mm -hmm. the Sunni schools. Mm -hmm. So if sodomy between a man and his wife is prohibited, then a futai or a, it's prohibited with a man and a man. Am I correct in my research that this um, loosely homosexuality is, is referred to in the Quran around seven times? Well, wherever the story of Lut the Appears. prophet Lut is mentioned, uh, the, uh, the act is referred to. Now, and the, the reason that I say seven times is that, you know, there are many other things in the Quran that are mentioned several times. Uh, uh, so if it's only mentioned seven times, and it's rather loosely mentioned, it would, it, uh, would, that be, uh, would that be an indication that, it hasn't, that, that God, I suppose, didn't place an enormous amount of emphasis on that it? That would be incorrect because... Theft, for instance, is mentioned once. Right. 
so the verse asariqu wa sariqatu faqta'u aydiyahuma uh, it mentions a punishment for theft only it once does. in the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, secondly, the punishment that was given to the people of Lut is mentioned uh, within the Quran and it's mentioned with harsh wording. Mm -hmm. Meaning, uh, but remember one thing, the Quran in its wordings, sometimes the Quran will mention, for instance, when a person goes and relieves himself from the toilet, but the Quran doesn't use explicit mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. You do not fa find foul language in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the Quran is there. Uh, like for instance, in the Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regard to approaching one's wife on the nights of fasting, uh, Approach your, uh, your cultivation how you want to approach. Mm -hmm. Having sex with one's wife is referred to as cultivation. So that's no, the yeah. language of the Quran. It doesn't yeah. use vulgar or... No, 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 language no, no. With Gosh, regard no, to no. The sexual act, I wouldn't expect it to. Uh, or with regard to, um, unlike the Bible, the Bible you have the you have explicit language in the Bible. Mm, mm. But going back to my the, the, the opening point, you know, if Muslims consider homosexuality to be to be a moral disorder, and you know it, it is mentioned in the Quran loosely seven times but the Quran doesn't it doesn't endorse a punishment for homosexuality I wouldn't where, say it's mentioned loosely in the Quran it's mentioned well, it's, it's not it's not mentioned ex uh, really explicit. do you think that it's explicit because yeah, because explicit enough in the sense that as I mentioned to you how the sexual act is referred to in the Quran it's refer the homosexual act is referred to in the yeah. Quran also and also the punishment of the people of Lut is uh, mentioned in harsh terms, meaning that they were punished for that act. But it doesn't, it doesn't endorse punishment though for homosexuality. And what you refer to is the corporal punishment, the Islamic law. So mm -hmm. th that's something else. Mm -hmm. So the Islamic law with regard to the homosexual act is actually disputed. But the Quran, the, the Quran would be quite clear about the punishment for adultery. Uh, no. So with the pun uh, the punishment for uh, fornication out of wedlock is mentioned explicitly in the Quran, but the punishment for adultery is not mentioned in the Quran. Mm. It's mentioned in the Hadith, mm. which mentions the stoning. Mm. So stoning is not mentioned in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Stoning for the adultery is mentioned in the Hadith. In the hadith. So uh, the absence of something uh, uh, being uh, not mentioned in the Quran doesn't entail it's not there. Mm -hmm. With regard to the the yeah. corporal punishment on homosexuals, that's something you'll find details of a, of a dispute of the nature of the punishment. So the, the dropping from a height, the burning, all these things are actually disputed. So the jurists have different positions on the actual punishment. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, your initial question, starting from the morality... No, 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 I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to mention that, that there, are, there are differences in the different schools of thought. Yes, uh, around around that. But let's talk a little bit about the hadith. You, you've mentioned the Quran and, and where it's mentioned in the Quran. Tell me about the hadith. Bear in mind that the Quran is the primary source. It's the undiluted direct word of God. The hadith obviously is is, is different. So tell me where... where the hadith, uh, what is mentioned in the hadith explicitly is with regard to the action uh, which is referred to as a lawata, which is the... Uh, act of sodomy being prohibited it's an it's deemed a sin sodomy mm -hmm. irrelevant to whether it's between a man and woman mm -hmm. or whether it's b between a man and a man yes no it's, absolutely it's, yeah, it's yeah. prohibited yeah, yeah. so the the act of uh, uh, sodomy is prohibited in the hadith with explicit wording meaning there's no doubt on this to the point uh, that all four sunni schools they prohibit a married couple from even committing committing that sexual act. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if it's prohibited for a, a man and woman, it's prohibited for a man and man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I suppose here in the UK, um, we, we see horrific stories in the media about um, Sharia law, in, you know, in countries like Afghanistan and Iran, you know, people being put, you know, gay people being pushed off buildings and so on and so forth in the name of Sharia law. Can you expand a little bit on that? So with regard to Sharia law in the modern age, so you have the post-Ottoman Caliphate age, mm -hmm. you have uh, nation states. So mm -hmm. we have over 50 Muslim nation states. Mm -hmm. Nation states tend to utilize Sharia law mm 
mm-hmm. for authoritarianism. So aspects of Sharia law are implemented in societies where uh, the entire Sharia law is not implemented. Aspects of Sharia law are implemented. Because if you had total Sharia law, you wouldn't have the concept of a nation state. Because mm-hmm. Sharia law is applied in a caliphate, mm-hmm. and caliphate is beyond uh, a racial group, mm. an ethnicity. Uh, so the application of Sharia law today in all the nation states is selective. So the court procedures. Well, it certainly is because you know, as I said, you, we we read about these horrific stories from time to time of people being pushed off buildings. We don't really hear about people being stoned to death for adultery. It seems to be particularly harsh for gay people. No. Uh, in Iran, you do have stonings. They do stone adulterers. Uh, you can check statistics. You'll find uh, adulterers stoned, and it's very regular. So you, you would say that they're, they're, they're not as harsh for for, for, for for gay people? Or it's parallel to, tell the truth, it's parallel to, to people who, who, who commit adultery? The, the Islamic law, as it stands, is an application of hudud, of corporal punishments, on sexual display. So sexual dip- display is beyond homosexuals, it applies to everyone. Mm. So if there's a public display of the sexual act of coitus in public, that is punished. But if there is, so, uh, the Sharia law doesn't intervene on people's private lives. So in Sharia law, it's prohibited, for instance, spying is, is not permitted unless it's for security of the, the people, but in general, if Zayd and Bakr are up to uh, no good acts uh, in their private lives, the Sharia law cannot intervene in that. So uh, the application of the hudud, which is the corporal punishment, is only on public display and very difficult to apply in the first place. Well, it would be because, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you've got to have four witnesses. Yes. So, so you would have to have four witnesses that would have witnessed the homosexual act? or Well, with regard to uh, the homosexual act, what some of the jurists they state is that the punishment of an adulterer is applied on the homosexual. So the same stringent conditions, which is not only an observation of uh, the act, it's also an explicit observation. So when you read uh, the entry of the private organ, all that needs to be observed, and that very rarely occurs, if it occurs at all. So if even if they find a man and a woman naked, mm. Uh, it's insufficient to apply the stoning. Mm, mm. So these, the conditions for stoning are very stringent. But do you think that they always keep to that? Do you think that they're honourable and that they keep to, to... So that would come down to court procedures. Yeah. So uh, the, the corruption of a state, uh, what is the level of corruption? Okay. Yeah. What is the, how is the law applied? How does the police who go and arrest people uh, the supposed criminals, how do they apply the law, how, the procedure in the court, the judges, how they analyze the case. All of this needs to be out in the open. I'll tell you something unique, unique about Islamic law. Uh, the uh, Theoretically today, because it's not applied in its correct form, but in the past history, mm. it was always an open uh, application. Open application in the sense that, like today, we have uh, with uh, the, the public gallery, the public could go and see the application of the law, how the qadi, the judge, is actually applying the law. Mm, so mm. there must be a fairness in ac- application. So whether these countries like Iran, which I deem as a mm. um, more of a nationalist uh, state as opposed to an Islamic state in the, the, the correct application of Islamic law, uh, how do they actually apply those uh, punishments? Because in the 1980s after Khomeini's revolution, they even punished many of the uh, the revolutionary guard and people who were close to Khamenei. They were punished. And the application of the law and how they interpreted Sharia law, all of that needs to be uh, critiqued. And it needs a review. A review from yeah, an yeah. independent body, meaning a Muslim independent body. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely, body. because I, I, I believe in what you're saying. That some of it has become corrupted. Uh, corrupted and... Uh, Post the Ottoman Caliphate, there's not been a more uh, entrenched historical application of Islam post the Ottomans. Because uh, the Ottomans underwent reforms in the 1800s, which was known as the Tanzimat. 
post the Ottomans, there's not been a, a correct application of Sharia law as it should be, mm. as it is found in the Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we've mentioned the countries, uh, or I'm, I'm going to mention the countries now. I mean, there are 66 in, in my research around the world, you know, that are mainly Muslim who, who criminalize same-sex relationships. And out of that, there are 11 countries, again, mainly Muslim, who retain the death penalty for LGBT plus people. I suppose my question to you, uh, Sheikh Azra, is do you think homosexual should be criminalized in every country, including Britain. And before going on to that, what you mentioned with regard to capital punishment for LGBT people, mm -hmm. this would need, uh, the, the statement would need uh, more defining. Uh, the application of death would only apply in uh, practicing homosexuals in the sense that they carry out the act. And as I said, in the sense of a public display of the act. Mm -hmm. so, they would have to have four witnesses. So in many countries, countries like Pakistan, for instance, there are people who are homosexually inclined, but the punishment is not carried out on such people. Or they have a... Culture. Because there's no witnesses. There's no witnesses, and also there's a, there's a culture of cross-dressing. In Pakistan, they have a culture of cross-dressing. Those people are tolerated. They are not punished under... Islamic law, even though Islam prohibits cross-dressing, there's no necessary punishment mention yeah. with regard to no, cross-dressers. No, the ruler is uh, free to establish what they refer to as ta'zir laws. Ta'zir laws means if he feels there's a need to apply a fine or, a, or an imprisonment, he has the right to do so, but yeah. no such thing has been done. So uh, this m movement of LGBT, we as Muslims... Uh, we do not agree with the movement in the sense that how they frame these things doesn't apply to us yeah. in the first yeah. place. And I don't think that there are any statistics to, you know, out of those 11 countries. I, I, I can't quote you statistics, the number of people that would have, uh, that would have you know, had the death penalty imposed upon them. I, I, I don't think those statistics are, 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 are available. With regard to your question... Um, About criminalizing... Criminalization. Yeah. So, for instance, living in Britain, Britain is more or less a secular country mm -hmm. uh, in right. practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. In theory, of course, we have the Church of England and uh, the heritage of Henry VIII. But nevertheless, the, the country is secular. Mm -hmm. So the, stand, the standpoint, meaning the starting point of any country, is from its, uh, its basis. Mm -hmm. So the basis of this country is secular. So I wouldn't expect Britain to ban homosexuality. But what I would demand from the British people is that you must believe in the Quran and Islam and I preach therefore Islam to everyone from the king to the common bus driver that you should become Muslim for your own salvation. From that standpoint, once they become Muslim, if Charles becomes a Muslim or the, the prime minister and the constitution changes, then you would expect the country to apply Islamic law. But the the very discussion as it stands, that, as yeah. it stands yeah. it's a secular country so uh, my standpoint would be they first need to become muslim as opposed to criminalizing just one thing which doesn't really apply so homosexuality for a non-muslim living in a secular country there's no prohibition in the first place because he doesn't believe in god in the, in, uh, from the onset. But you, you, you may also think that even if homosexuality was criminalized here in the UK, it doesn't stop it if you look at the statistics for, this, for the 66 countries. The, the act doesn't stop this, this, the, the same way that alcoholism doesn't stop, gambling doesn't stop, yeah. theft doesn't stop, homosexuality doesn't yeah. stop. If you look at the Sharia law, it's not actually stopping the act itself, it's stopping a public display of such things. So the, the public display uh, is stopped. It's, it's safeguarding the public, unlike this LGBT movement. Well, you, you need to expand a little bit on the public display because, you know, how many people are going to go around and have homosexual acts in public? Well, for instance, a, an LGBT march would be banned in an Islamic in a, 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 a actual well, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be having sex. There wouldn't be any sexual yeah, display but in, it in, would a, be, in, a, it in would, a gay pride march. In Gay pride would be... A, a promotion of it's like having the uh, a march for promoting alcohol in an Islamic country but you could have that and not be drinking the alcohol yes but the, but the promotion of such things right, okay. would be prohibited okay. as well okay
Okay. Yes. Okay. I suppose the next question, and it's quite a burning question, is: um, Do you think Muslims, based on what we've spoken about so far, do you think that Muslims are intrinsically homophobic? Is there a lot? Is there high levels of homophobia? Like you get this term anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. and today it's applied to Muslims. In fact, anti-Semitism is a European illness, mm -hmm. but it's applied to Muslims today mm -hmm. because of the illegal state of Israel. Mm -hmm. So similarly. Homophobia, uh, I would say, is more of a Western thing. In, mm -hmm. in the Islamic tradition, uh, there was no such thing known as homophobia, meaning if there's someone drinking alcohol, we don't call him uh, and people dislike the act. Mm -hmm. We don't refer to it as a wine phobia, um, alcoholic mm -hmm. phobia. Or well, would you say that most Muslims dislike homosexuals? They dislike the act. They dislike the act. The act. Okay. And they would dislike the militant LGBT activist who attempts to brainwash young kids and make them uh, more accepting of his lifestyle because we're not tolerant to that. So would you say there are high levels of homophobia in, in Muslim communities? No, not really. Not really? No. Okay. Could you expand a little bit on that? So if a homosexual came into the masjid, he prayed his prayer, uh, he... That's not really homophobia. Homophobia would mean that if they know of a, a homosexual um, assaulting him physically or insulting him with verbal swears or uh, not uh, permitting him into the masjid, none of that occurs as far as I'm aware. Okay. Would you say, would you say that you know we've we've talked about the theology in relation to homosexuality? Would you say that's would you say that a lot of views that Muslims have about homosexuality is based on traditions, culture, rather than actual theological teachings? Yes, so if, how people view a homosexual, will that will be influenced by their cultural background, mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. So from different regions, mm -hmm. some regions people are more tolerant, in other regions mm -hmm. less tolerant. Mm -hmm. But the teachings could you give me an, Could you give me an example on that? There are certain countries where the men may be m more inclining towards a bisexual behavior and there are certain countries where that would be totally intolerable. What, what country are we, are we talking about here? Without mentioning any countries because many people will be offended if I mention some of those countries. Okay, yeah. right. okay. No, 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 that's absolutely fine. Um, you say people would be offended to 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 name um, a because they will see country. a contradiction between Islam, the teachings yeah. of Islam, and that behavior. Okay, okay. I suppose uh, in my experience, when I was writing my book on Islam, and obviously I went around to to meet lots of uh, lots of imams and went to various mosques, and when I raised this subject about LGBT issues, amongst many other topics. Um, I was met with a, a silence and I was told stories that, you know, we don't talk about LGBT issues, we don't talk about gay Muslims, we don't like talking about subjects like that in our mosques. And I was left with the impression that there is a lot of silence in UK mosques on uh, on sensitive issues, I mean, not, not exclusively to um, issues pertaining to LGBT and gay people, but... Um, Particularly that there's a, there's a silence that people just feel very uncomfortable talking talking about. Well, every week I tour various mosques of the UK, mm. and I openly discuss uh, LGBT amongst many other things. Uh, the younger generation, when I say younger, anyone under forty, very vocal. Uh, they're very vocal on these issues. Mm. We speak about these issues. Uh, the way me and you are discussing, we discuss this in open Q&A yeah. in the Masajid. Which is a good thing, isn't it? Of course, and yeah. but I think uh, the lack of people um, engaging in this subject may be due to not being able to, having the ability to engage on the subject. Or having of course, depth, age, uh, level of education, you know, um, uh, culture, all, all the, there all are so many issues that, that come into that, yeah. Yes. But do you think that older imams are less equipped to deal with, with sensitive modern-day subjects like this. Yes, because what's happened in the past decade, you have these uh, strange movements like red pill, black pill, mm -hmm. incels, mm -hmm. LGBT, 
mm. all of these things. There's there's a bombardment of various types of movements, mm -hmm. and um, but it's necessary to talk about them, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. And uh, as Muslims in the past uh, always uh, took the bull by the horns, today we as Muslims should take the bull, the LGBT bull, the Zionist bull. N not to say they're the same, but various types of confronted bulls, conf yeah. confront these bulls and take them by the horns and uh, with our methodology of kalam which is the science uh, our islamic theology uh, method take on these bulls and give our islamic stance but remember one thing uh, which is important to highlight how the lgbt movement uh, frames its position in the western world is not the same as it should be framed in the Muslim context. Like I say always that the Muslims didn't need a suffragette movement because the women already had property rights, inheritance rights. Mm. So the, the way women's rights mm. were tackled in the Muslim world are different to the Western experience. Mm. And the same with anti-Semitism, the same with uh, LGBT and other issues that may arise. Well, obviously, you know, you, you said yourself, you go around and you discuss these these issues in various mosques, and obviously you're a teacher and you come in contact with lots of young people, and obviously you know that there's young Muslims born here in the UK or educated in the UK who have access to social media platforms. They're very well versed on, on, on these type of issues. But going back to the, to, 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 you know, to the older uh, imams, uh, mosques throughout the UK, you know, communities that would, you know, for Friday prayers that would have, you know, between 200 and, and 300, um, you know, um, uh, men uh, to come for Friday prayers, you know, they have to bear in mind that at least 10%, whether, you know, if it's, if it's 200 people who, who come for Friday prayers, at least 20 of those men Less than 10%. Less than 10%, less than 10%, but well, let's say an average 10% if we take into account um, um, uh, gay men and bisexual men. That's quite a number. It's so, quite a number to, st to say, uh, you know, to stay silent on. Uh, no, uh, the mosques, the imams should not stay silent. What they should have is a counter-narrative. So we have our narrative, mm -hmm. uh, our Islamic narrative. So what I tell young people when i go to the various masajid with regard to lgbt i say firstly i say exercise your freedom of speech in schools why are we being silent why are we being silenced in schools so young people should wear t-shirts which say i have the freedom to exercise my freedom of speech no, because no, muslims yeah. are silenced on political issues and on moral issues mm -hmm. on ethical issues so we have our freedom to exercise our freedom of speech to say homosexuality is immoral meaning that's our standpoint mm -hmm. to validate that standpoint we can speak from logic we can speak from our scriptures and from any other uh, philosophical method uh, in order to give our point of view thirdly i say to them in school always ask the teachers uh, can you inform us with regard to the various STDs associated with the Homosexual Act? Mm -hmm. Because that's not taught as much as it should be. Mm. Fourthly, um, what are the harms that uh, are associated with the uh, Act, the Homosexual Act in terms of AIDS, HIV, the breakdown of the immune system, uh, men wearing nappies in their older age? Can you inform us with regard to this? That's not being homophobic, meaning a young man who's brainwashed into thinking that homosexuality is totally tolerable when he's 14 or 15 and then by the time he reaches 50s he's wearing nappies he should be informed of this that this act does educate me why would he be wearing nappies as because act? sometimes the act of sodomy excessive sodomy sometimes leads to uh, well that's bacteria. that's provided that there's, 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 that they engage in anal sex Yes, yeah. yes. So, meaning young people should be informed of this, all of these yeah. things as well. And then uh, body uh, dysphoria, uh, you know, this but extreme of young people being told to have their genitals removed and take all these various types of medicines and pills. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll just come on to that in a little while. We'll talk about transgender people a bit. But let, let, let's, let's stick at this particular point. Um, because, because obviously you're, you're mentioning young people. 
in, in, in my experience, in my research, and please correct me if I'm wrong because you perhaps have, have more access to, to, to young Muslims than I have, you know, I'm, I'm dis I've discovered that, you know, there are numerous social media platforms for young LGBT people here in the UK, more so in the last five years than ever before. So obviously these are, these are the type of issues that they will be discussing. I mean, they're aware of all these issues about, um, you know, sexual transmitted diseases and so on and so forth. But, you know, they, they want to pursue with, 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 their, with their sexuality. Well, they want... No, let, let me finish on this, because what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I've discovered is that they um, have... Uh, that they're coming to terms with, with being gay, that, they're, that they still want to be Muslim, they still want to practice their, 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 their religion, that they're no longer sticking around waiting for tolerance, that they want acceptance, they want acceptance now, they want respect, they want gay-friendly mosques, they, you know, they don't, they're not waiting around for some imam or some mosque or, or, or community to, to accept them, they, they have found acceptance in their own network, and that there is there's a little bit of a mini-revolution taking place here in the UK that will probably become more visible in the years to come. Well, when I say years to come in the, in the next three to five well, years. Well, what type of homo tolerance do they want in the masajid? They want the wudu place to be turned pink? Meaning, what do they I want? I don't think they do. I don't think they want to change anything. I don't think that they want to change any of the theological teachings whatsoever. They're, they are not stopped from praying in the masajid in the yeah. first place. There's no masjid that has a banner that no homosexuals can pray. No, I know that. I know, I know but that. But secondly, that. If, uh, to, for instance, us in a city, Muslims, we have a drug problem. We have drug mm -hmm. dealers and they deal drugs everywhere. If they tomorrow started a movement, they would have more power than this uh, homosexual movement. And if they said to us, we need you to tolerate us because we have a choice to smoke cannabis, or, st or you know, the number of cannabis smokers we have in the Muslim community, if they made a movement and mm -hmm. said, uh, people like Sheikh Asra should tolerate cannabis smokers and mm -hmm. we're going to make a movement, it wouldn't make any difference. It wouldn't make any difference uh, it wouldn't change an iota of anything. The, the theological stance will stay the same. The difference here is that in the West we have this thing where uh, a certain act creates a lifestyle. So, uh, and that you don't. Uh, and they want to be part of this lifestyle. So the the LGBT is not just the homosexual act. It's being a part of what they refer to as a community. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. At the same time, remain Muslim. Yeah. Well. The choice is very simple. If someone they want both. If someone yes. So if someone wants to be a part of the LGBT community and take it on as a lifestyle, they leave the fold of Islam. And if well, this this new generation, they, they that's they where, want to that, be a that's hybrid. Where, that's where they that, That's where they, the big challenge will come because they want to be part of both communities. It's like having a, a perennialist who believes Christianity is right and Islam is right at the same time. Mm. So. We cannot it's, a little, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit different from that. It is different. I, I, I'm not saying whether this is right or whether this is wrong. This is what I'm seeing. I'm like seeing I the, said, emer the emergence of this. Like I said, we take the bull by its horns and uh, mm. tackle it theologically, mm. meaning there's no theological uh, validation for such no, a no, no, I get your point, but I, I don't think that they're out for a challenge. I just think that they have come to it, the, 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 what I'm seeing is they're coming to accept their sexuality, they want to remain Muslim. You know, before, you, you're right, I think maybe up, even up until a couple of years ago, probably still relevant to the, to the current day, is, you know, you had two choices if you were gay. You either um, stayed within the folds of Islam or you left. I think that this is a new way of thinking. So what the, you can the, have both the the position without challenge. Let's say someone says he's a homosexual, mm -hmm. a practicing homosexual, mm -hmm. and a Muslim. He would be deemed as a sinful Muslim. So, the, but if as soon as someone says the act of homosexuality is permitted, mm -hmm. they leave the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose their argument to that would be: I have made my peace with God. God created me. In terms this is, of their sin. Yeah, this is between me and God. I will let God so judge have, me. Not we, some imam, not some Where mosque. we would stand there, where we would stand there, is if there is an alcoholic, he drinks alcohol, and he's a Muslim, he's a sinful Muslim, ultimate judgment is with Allah. Absolutely. Yes? Yeah. There's a homosexual, he believes he is sinning, but 
ultimate judgment is with Allah. We do not go around like some of these Christian... Uh, I Western would correct you there. I think the new generation of young British Muslims, gay Muslims, who, who, who are practicing, um, they won't think that it's sinful. That's, yeah. that's, that's the difference. So that's, that's where theologically we can uh, explain to them that they've left the fall of Islam. At least from a theological basis, and if they disagree, no, I they, well, I think the they can continue disagreeing. <laughs> That's what we refer to as, uh, see, moral relativism. It leads to this because if there tomorrow a movement grows where a person believes incest is uh, permitted, and they say there's no clear proof for incest being haram, being mm. prohibited, mm. and they make a movement and say, look. We are Muslim, but we permit incest as mm. long as they are two consensual adults, uh, and uh, they um, they may use uh, uh, contraception. And they say, look, incest mm. is permitted, and they mm. make a movement. It doesn't change mm. our theology at all. Mm. Or if there's a, there's a movement that says, no, no, I, I totally agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you here, but I'm just saying that from from my research, that this new generation that's coming. That they're not out to they're not out to change anything. They're not out to challenge you. Well, we've had movements in the past, Islamically, you read Islamic history from fourteen hundred years, we've had numerous movements, they come and go. Seventy years from now this movement, whether it will be around or not, we will see. Yeah. At the moment, would it be fair to say that for, for gay people in Islam that there is a policy don't ask, don't tell? Would you agree with no, that or not? Uh, no, not really. Uh, regularly, young people who are homosexuals, they do ask the question and they they inform the imams that they are homosexual. And Would you say that those are quite brave? Brave in the sense that if you divulge your sexuality, that you open yourself up, you're exposed to conversion therapy? No, uh, in Islam, we don't have a conversion therapy. We just simply tell the person... Uh, have a desist from the act. For instance, a man has a desire to sleep around with women. Mm -hmm. It's a natural desire. Mm -hmm. But in Islam, we tell him, you must desist from this and receive reward with God. Mm. So the man stops womanizing. Mm. Similarly, a man has desire for men. He's told, do not act upon that desire. You have reward with God. But we don't sit with him with the... With the uh, with uh, hypnotism and giving them chemicals and none of that. No, no and, 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 and I, wa I wasn't suggesting because because again, self discipline. Again, in my research, you know, the, the, I discovered that there were probably two types of response. The first response is the rejection. Look, you're, 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 there's no such thing as a religious homosexual. You know, um, the, you know, people who have um, come out. You know, they've been told that they're deviants, they're sinners, you have no place. Uh, that lifestyle has no place in Islam, you know, you better leave. That's, that's, the, that's the kind of the first response. The, the second response that a lot of people seem to have received is a more, what would appear to be a more sympathetic response, you know, almost empathizing with the person saying, well, actually, you know, you have an affliction, uh, I, I, you know, we, it is an affliction. We, we can pray together. You can get over this. You know, um, they've been told. You know, there's no such thing as a person who's 100% homosexual. Let's say, for argument's sake, you're 70% homosexual. That means there's 30% of you that's heterosexual. We can work with that 30%. You know, we, you you can see uh, an Islamic counselor, therapist, who will help you overcome the affliction. Uh, you can get married, you can have children, and all, you know, when you do these things, those feelings, those thoughts that you have, those deviant thoughts, they will all go away and you will be fine. Well, Is the, that not a form of conversion therapy? The person who stays celibate and fights the desire is rewarded. So he's not a sinful person for the thoughts. The fact that he resists to act upon those thoughts he would be rewarded, and even if he dies celibate, he would in fact die as a person with immense reward and a high station with God. So homosexuals, this is the best response I can give, have a chance to get closer to God if they do not disobey God than many straight people. So that affliction is a yeah. means to get closer to God. They don't need to go through any um, thought 
reform or um, any of this uh, uh, therapy, but just desist from the act. So would you say there's, there's, um, that there wouldn't be imams in your experience that would advise people to get married in the hope that it would... There may the, be some imams who give that advice, but yeah. uh, sometimes I would... Would that be wrong advice? I, I would advise them sometimes not to give that advice. Why? Okay. Because there are people who then live double lives. So if there is a person who has a 100% desire for people of the same sex, the advice given to them is to remain celibate, desist from the act, you will receive a high station with God, higher than many straight people. Yeah. So th that desire being placed in them and then, then that person desisting from the act, he will have so much re reward with God. Like some people have other deviant desires. If they don't act on those de deviant desires, meaning worse than no, I'm with homosexuality, you. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't act on that desire, they will have a reward with God. Yeah. Now, obviously, a lot of our discussion so far has been um, about uh, gay, uh, gay men and, uh, and, and bisexual men. I mean, female homosexuality, lesbians, am I correct in saying that they're not mentioned in the Quran and that they're only briefly hinted at in the Hadith? They get off a little bit lightly, don't they? Uh, there is a mention of them in the Quran uh, with regard to the women. There is one verse relating to that. And they are mentioned in the Hadith. They are mentioned in the hadith. Uh, in terms of corporal punishments, that's again is disputed in the books of fiqh and there. Uh, but as you said, not as explicitly as homosexuals. Hmm. And what advice is there out there? I mean, obviously you do a lot of, of work with young people and you said that you meet a lot of young people who, who, who may be questioning their sexuality or, or you give talks in general about about sexual sexuality. I mean, what, what sort of um, work would take place within Muslim communities f for for young females who would be in the Again, similar the, position the to same as, uh, as the same as the males in the sense that desisting from the act is rewardable. We can't, if someone cannot fight that desire, I mean, the desire doesn't go, then the, the reward that person has is immense. That the fact that they remain celibate, they stay away from. Uh, sex. I mean, you have straight people who all their lives they remain celibate and they die celibate. So the same is applied to people who, who claim that they have a hundred percent desire for only men or people of the same sex. And then they must remain celibate and receive a immense reward with God. Mm. That's the the only solution. Uh, but by making a counter movement of uh, you know permitting homosexuality under the framework of Islam. This takes them out of the fold of Islam. It's mm. like making a, a, mm. a, a rights movement for alcoholics in Islam. Mm. That's how mm. it's viewed. And what, would you, what would your views be about transgender people? Obviously, it's a different, it's a different area in the sense that it's, about, it's, it's predominantly about gender. It's about people who, who, are, you know, who, who want to change their gender, who say that you know, their the, the, the gender it, it, it's uh, they need therapy, definitely. You know, they, they dispute that they're, that they're not the gender that they were assigned at birth. Well, theologically, that's totally wrong. And I believe they need therapy. It's, but it's a form of uh, uh, what I mentioned to you as body dysphoria. Mm. So what we're witnessing now, young people being told, they, you know, you may get a young woman, a young girl, she's a bit of a tomboy, and then... She's made to think that she's a boy, mm -hmm. but in later life she realizes she went through a phase and then she, she realizes she, she is in fact a woman. But to make her take different chemicals and change her genitalia, this is a form of abuse. This is something that secular, this is, I would want yeah. the government here to change the laws with regard to uh, but as you know, there has been a tsunami of change in, in the transgender um, debate in recent years and more and more people, maybe not necessarily Muslims, but more and more people here in the UK are coming out as transgender and in particularly young people uh, who are coming out as non-binary. I mean, um, what's your opinion of that? Do you think that that could actually take hold? Uh, they will, no. I think there will be a backlash to this in the long run. 
uh, generation to come, they'll realize the mistake that they are doing. Because if this is an issue for non-Muslims, why would it not be an issue for Muslims? Because I've heard of this uh, stuff uh, of fluffies as well, something they refer to as fluffies. People think they're animals. People think they have a right to refer to themselves as cats. It's stupidity. It doesn't need any tolerance in Islam. We don't tolerate that. That's nonsense. A young person speaks up in the, uh, the masjid and says, look, I think I'm a bird or I'm a cat. No, I agree with you. I agree, I agree with you gender, on that. If, if, he, if he's a boy, I'm, gonna, I'm going to say you're a boy. Yeah. If, if he's a man, I'm going to say you're a man. But these, these are people who don't accept the gender that they were assigned at birth. Yeah, it's, it's stupidity. You know, I don't agree with that at all. But there are transgender Muslims in the world. Yes. So in the hadith, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, that with regard to men dressing as women and women dressing as men, is something prohibited in Islam. It's not permissible. So the person who does that is sinful. And what would your, um, I mean, <laughs> Those are your views, and you're entitled to those views. You know, I, I, I agree um, very much in free speech, but there will be people watching this that would say, well, actually, the sheikh's review, uh, uh, views are very transphobic. Now, we talked about homophobia. Well, transphobic, the again, if, there's a, if, if what they mean by f phobia is me stating the, 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 what the religion of Islam states with regard to a man dressing as a woman. Well, they said this is. The, they would say that that's direct discrimination against the trans community. There's a fear. There's it's, a loathing there of trans people. No, there's no loathing of any human. It's prohibited in Islam. If the person asks me, I'll say it's prohibited in our deen. It doesn't mean that the person is assaulted or insulted or uh, anything else. What you refer to as intolerance or treated any differently. So, for instance, well, I'm a, I'm you're a you're a well-educated man, and obviously you're a very diplomatic man. Uh, would you? I would. I would question if everybody um, that that every imam would be as 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 capable of dealing with these issues that that you that you are. For instance, I'm a Muslim shopkeeper. A, a transgender person comes and buys something or delivers my shopping. There's no transphobic behavior towards that person. He's a human being. Mm -hmm. But if the person asks me, what does your deen, your religion say with regard to this act, I'll say it's prohibited. Mm -hmm. And I will we'll always give you the example of an alcoholic mm -hmm. or a gambler. Mm -hmm. If there's a guy, he's gambling away, mm -hmm. he's gambling all his wealth away. Mm -hmm. I'll tolerate him. I won't show any phobia mm -hmm. towards him. But mm -hmm. if he asks me, what's your position on gambling? I'll say it's prohibited in our deen. Mm -hmm. So that cannot be interpreted as being transphobic in the sense if there's a transgender person walking down the road and people assault him or insult him, you'll find there's a high level of tolerance in many Muslim communities more than uh, other communities. Like mm. transgenders in Pakistan. Mm. Mm. They have all communities. Of, they refer to them as Kusre. Yes, yes. Yeah. And they, they are left alone. Yeah. No one really harms them. Yeah. So no, if, no, if they mean, mean by transphobia, that, that's not found in, in that sense. So this is what I mean by the way the suffragettes movement had its framework to work with in Victorian times. The LGBT movement here in the West has its Western framework. Fighting for gay rights in the Muslim world would need a total different uh, angle, a to total different... No, and I understand that, and I understand you, your viewpoint as a religious, uh, as a religious man. Uh, um, but I suppose, you know, um, there are those that would accuse, accuse Muslims in your position of being homophobic and transphobic. Yes, that's just... Because they'd say they're hiding behind their that's religion. That's because, that's because... But I do uh, get your point. That's basically what I refer to that as, uh, like you have cyber bullying, you have this type of bullying now, the Zionists do this on the regular by using uh, anti-Semitism card. Zionists use the anti-Semitism mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. And people, I could easily say, oh, you're Islamophobic now, mm -hmm. which is probably not the case. Let's say there's someone who says about me I'm uh, transphobic, and mm -hmm. I respond to them by saying, you're Islamophobic. Mm -hmm. When in reality, they cannot engage in the philosophical discussion. The philosophical discussion will start from moral relativism. How do you define morality? Mm. Define to me your sources of morality. Mm. And I will give you my sources of morality. 
uh, are your sources of morality from the mind or are they from religious scripture? Mm. Mm. Uh, meaning when we go deep into the discussion, uh, I think when they cannot go deep enough, then they just use these labels, oh, he's just homophobic or he's just transphobic. Mm-hmm. And similarly, a Muslim could easily do the same. You're just Islamophobic. Mm. Well, all of this would be mm. false. Mm. Yeah. I get your point on that. Tell me, and we're, we're, we're coming to the last few questions now. Tell me, um, parents, you know, uh, what advice would you give to parents if they were watching this today? You know, parents who've just discovered that their son or daughter is, uh, is either homosexual or lesbian or indeed transgender. I mean, what advice would you give? to a parent who's just discovered that um, their child thinks that they're a, a member of the LGBT community. Again, uh, when you say LGBT community, how would you define a community? Meaning your child making the choice to join a community. Well, uh, they, the, they, may, they, may, they may... They have no children of their own. These LGBT people, they have no children of their own. No, well, let me explain that. Maybe, maybe that was, uh, let me just explain that. I suppose, you know, that sometimes, you know, before a child comes and tells their parents, they may have, you know, they've lived with that, that secret for, for a while and they may, they may be friends with other um, gay and lesbian people, and especially in the social media uh, platforms. So therefore, they probably do feel that, that they are part of, of that social media LGBT platform, so that they do come and then they tell their, their, their parents. The problem I have with this uh, concept of an LGBT community is that they target the children of others online grooming or whatever, or brainwashing. But, but that, that, that's not the question. Again, just go back. If you're a parent here and you've just discovered, or your child has just discovered that, um, that, that they're gay or lesbian, what advice would you give to that parent? Firstly, the parent uh, should re-examine how they raise their child in the sense of informing their children if the schools have uh, information campaigns of informing young people of LGBT of all these things then we as Muslims should have the counter narrative in our mosques in our homes we should give the counter narratives to our young children so they need to re-examine that Mm -hmm. secondly they need to pray to Allah that Allah guide their child back to the straight path and realize the error of their ways and inform their child that, look, if you desist from this act... What do you mean by the error of their ways? If because they decide to join an LGBT so-called community... Because well, they'll say that's where, that's where we find acceptance. Well, acceptance... God created me this way. Everybody else rejects me. I feel I belong in that community. What they mean by acceptance here is acceptance of doing that act. Acceptance of fulfilling their desires. They might have done any it, of the act. It, it, if they don't do any act, then the parent. If they don't do any act, then the parent tells them, "We tolerate you as you are, as long as you don't carry out the act and permit the act." Meaning, it's not permissible in Islam. Desist from it; you will receive a high reward. So we go back to what I said: the parent should inform them. Look, by not acting on this, you're receiving great, immense reward. Uh, you are tolerated. You have that desire? No, and I get, I get all that. And obviously that's going back to the theological teachings again. But on a social level, on a human level, how do you think the parents should deal with this? Well, depending on the particular case, if the child decides to leave Islam and be a practicing homosexual, then in that case, the parents should continue attempting to convince the child of the error of their ways in the long run, the person may realize the error of their ways. Or he, might be, he, he or she might be a member of this new group that's going to emerge in the next couple of years, that's going to bear fruit, that'll, that, that, that will say that the, who, who will want to be a practicing homosexual or lesbian and remain within the, the fold of Islam. Well, that group... Uh, you're, you're, you're only giving them one choice. What are there are two choices? That group is inept, theologically inept meaning it's very vacuous, it's a vacuous claim. It's an absurd group. It's like having these fuzzies, meaning it's just absurd. It doesn't really pose any long-term threat to anything. Well, no, it's you, might not. To, <laughs> you might have to wait and see on that one. No, 
going back, obviously, so that's the advice you would give to, to parents. Again, final question, what would you, if there was a young person, a young 14, 15 year old watching this, male, female, what advice would you give to a young person who was going through that, that, that conflict, um, internal conflict, that, um, the thought that they were gay or lesbian? What advice would I you would give I would advise them? them that as Muslims, mm -hmm. our very starting point is, uh, is what is known as ubudiyah, servitude to Allah. So our very existence has a purpose. That purpose is obedience to Allah. Mm -hmm. So obedience to Allah overwhelms any of our desires, meaning mm -hmm. every human has desires, mm -hmm. but overwhelming that desire for the sake of Allah will bring you closer to Allah. Mm -hmm. So in life you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You either adopt, uh, you live according to your desires, unbridled, or you live according to the law of Allah. You have the law of man and you have the law of Allah. Mm -hmm. We, uh, what do we promote? We promote the law of Allah, not the, the law of man which changes from time to place. When something suits them, they eat fetuses in China, meaning they permit people to eat fetus. That's something immutable, meaning Islamic law is immutable, the morality is immutable. It doesn't mm -hmm. change from time to place. Mm -hmm. Just because a community forms mm. to validate a particular desire, we don't change our morality based on that. But don't you think that most young Muslims will already have heard that, that they'll already have received no, lesson be, that lesson on that, and it hasn't changed a thing. No, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people are even unaware of such a basic concept. Really? Yes. Okay. You'd be surprised. And when they hear this for the first time, it really changes their outlook, how they view life. So yeah. if they hear that, they, uh, before hearing that, they could think that they were gay or lesbian in, in they could their sexual orientation. <laughs> and you think that that could actually be it, the changing point? It's an issue of Iman, belief, and Kufr. Meaning, mm. which one do you go with? Mm. It's a choice. Mm. Ultimately, it's a choice. Mm. La ikraha fi deen. Mm -mm. There is no compulsion in the deen. What does mm. that mean? Mm. You cannot force your uh, conviction on another person. Mm. Even if mm. uh, ostensibly they pretend to be a Muslim mm. and uh, mm. what we refer to as munafiqs, hypocrites, mm. they pretend to be Muslim, they don't really believe in it. They will be in the lowest pits of hellfire. Yeah. yeah. So don't be a munafiq, don't be a hypocrite, mm. but if you think with your mind and not solely with your desires, do we follow the law of Allah or do we follow the law of man? Or morality, what is our source of morality? Is it man or is it God? Do, do you think that, that, that young people and indeed parents, uh, it's kind of a joint question, do you, think there's, do you think that they're always met with kindness or a little bit of understanding, empathy? Or do you think that it's quite harsh, that, that, that they, they have to be taught the theological teachings uh, and that that harsh lesson has to be first and foremost. I think the harshness is sometimes necessary. Right. Okay. Because uh, you're directing your child's life. What direction are they going to? Right. In which direction are they heading? So if a child comes home with drugs, he comes home with alcohol, he comes home with a gambling addiction, but he, just, he's just, a womanizer. Just, just, just stick with this issue. And, I'm yeah. giving, uh, yeah. and he comes as a homosexual, they're all treated the same. Yeah. So there's a no harsh difference. approach. It's, it, there's no difference. Harsh depending what you mean by harsh in the sense that son, do not do this act, desist from the act. It's intolerable with Allah. You will be sinful. Uh, what, what if for argument's sake that that doesn't work? Then Should they be disowned? Should that child be disowned? If disowning them will change them, then they should be disowned. But if disowning them would make them worse, then you... Don't disown them. You still try convincing them. It depends on the level of of uh, deviancy it leads to. If it leads to more deviancy, then you you keep them at the home, as long as they do not influence the other siblings and other people. Okay. It's like having for me. It's like having a drug dealer son. What do you do with your drug dealer son? Mm. A lot of us in the inner cities have to deal with drug dealers. Mm. Home, the, we deal with the. We've got a bigger drug dealer problem than homosexuals. Your final words, your final closing remark, do you want to make anything? My final closing remarks is that morality is judged by Allah yeah. and we follow the law of Allah. The law of man will change every 50 years. 50 years from now there will be new laws 
you'll have new fluffies and new cozies and some other concepts. But, but Islam won't change. Islam is the way it was revealed. It will always remain as such. Well, on that note, Sheikh Azro Rashid, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you.